Right, okay. Back in with the CBR. The engine's running pretty good these days. We changed the uh, fuel pump. And then we had to mess around with the starter switch because that was getting a bit dodgy. We'll make a connection. So that's all working as it should. It's got no fuel in it, but it does run well. So we're going to revisit the brakes. <laughs> Need to change the seals, clean the color, uh, the pistons up in the calipers, and get them running uh, and retracting because at the minute they just seize. So it's time to tackle that. So first things first, just crack this just so it's loose. Tighten it back up just to make it easier to undo when the caliper is swinging around. And obviously we're going to take, take these two bolts off and then see what we can do about trying to force the pistons out a little bit with the fluid just to make life easier. Right, and then these pins which hold the pads in they're just horrendous to try and undo, look. I can't get them undone without making more mess. So you're going to take the caliper out, put them in a clamp, a vice, and get them out that way. I'm just going to make a mess if I just keep trying to do it while they're on the bike, which is a shame because I wanted to push the pistons out a bit. But I'll push them out as much as I can, like they are there. And then... Uh, We'll take the caliper off, do the same on the other side, and take it home ready to rebuild them and change the seals. So if we just try and balance that somewhere, so we can see what's going on here, if at all possible. Right like that. And obviously, we're just going to pump the front brake. I'll just push them. See now that one's gone. We should be able to start moving the the second one. And that's as far as we're gonna get them out while we're in this situation. So now we'll undo the hose after we've got to the same position on the other side. I think that's probably the best bet. So we go to the other side now. Right, this side's marred any better. I managed to get one of the caps off for the retaining pins. Um, and I'll just push these pistons out as far as they'll go without removing the pads, which is a shame. If we could have took one of those pads out, we'd have almost been out, but that's just the way it is. So now we're going to take the hoses off and then just pump the fluid through uh, and try not to make a mess of the floor and then we can start stripping the calipers down. All right, and then caliper out of the way. We've got to change the fluid anyway. So we're just going to pump the brake pedal, uh, brake lever and just drain all this old rubbish out. I'll try not to make too much of a mess. Doesn't look the nicest brake fluid in the world. So it's probably a good job of doing it. And then we'll do the same on the other side and get these on the workbench. Right, getting these things out is proving a little bit difficult. So let's put the screwdriver like that Hit it with armor a few times, and then that has release this one. So that's that one done. That one come off on the bike. So once we've uh, got these out the way, all they do is just expose that Allen key there to remove the pins. I've already got that one out. So now we'll get the Allen keys out. All right, get the pins out, Allen key in there, and just back them out. And 
nice and easy. When they stop coming out, it's probably best to turn the caliper over and then uh, bang them out from underneath. And we'll have a go at that. Okay, so once you've got all the pins out, two per caliper, the pads are now easy, just slide out. And then we can remove the pistons. They're just gunked up probably, that's why they're seizing up, but we can clean all that up. We've got a new seal kit. So we need to get these out of here now. Now the way to do that is going to be compressed air, so I won't be able to do it this second, we'll have to take it to work, put our air compressor hose into there, no not there, I can't see with the camera being where it is, let's have a look, into there, that's where we're going to put our compressor, put some pressure for it, some pressurised air, and that should blow these pistons out, and we can clean them up, and change the seals inside. So let's get to the compressor. Oh, it's just worth mentioning, this bleed nipple has got to come out, otherwise you do all that work. I suppose you, you could leave it in there, but if you can't crack the bleed nipple, then you're not going to be able to bleed your calipers. And all that effort you put into buying seals and replacing it is going to be a nightmare, not worth it. So, use one of these spanners. This happens to be an 8mm. And that way, you're not going to round it off. If you round it off and it's stuck, it's practically game over for your calipers. And he's been in a long time. So there's every chance they could be tricky to get out. Oh, yeah. Can't hold the camera and do it at the same time, but that, that's got that off nicely. So now we can remove that nipple and we can change it for a new one, which means when we've done all the rebuilding, it will just be a lot easier to then bleed the brakes. But yeah, take a bit of time getting this out without making a mess, without rounding it off. Because if that little puppy gets damaged and you can't get it out, you'll never drill it out. And it's just a writ off caliper. So probably the most important thing here, take your time with this and get the right tool. Probably also worth mentioning, if you just crack it and put it back in for now, because if you do want to put compressed air into this caliper to blow out the the pistons obviously if that bleed nipple's missing then the compressed air isn't going to move the caliper so leave it in there for now but just make sure that you can get it undone quite important right so after giving you the speech about the bleed nipple I tried to put the spanner on this one and it just was not going to go you can just tell it was going to round off so you can feel when it's going to happen, so don't just go for it and round it off because then it's going to be a nightmare. So if that's not going to work, don't keep going and round it off. You need to think of a plan B before you get there. So I've got this deep 8mm socket, hammered it on all the way to the end so it's fully gripping it. And then you can apply your force onto that that did just let us crack it okay so just be careful obviously you get new nipples in the rebuild kit so it's not a problem i'll probably wiggle this socket off now now it's cracked there we go so it's nice and loose but if it starts to round off just don't force it stop while you quit while you're ahead as the saying goes Come up with another plan and then make sure you can get it undone because if you just round it off you'll get to the point where you can't get any purchase on it and then you're going to be in trouble so that's it both bleed nipples are loose so we'll put that back in for now and then 
get some compressed air and see if we can pop these pistons out. Right, we'll just put some air in the back of this, see if these pistons come down. Work to treat. We'll do the next one. Do on, mate. Bit of silicon. Right, so the trick of that stubborn one was to push it back in fully and then have another go with the air, and then it's come out nice. Right, so now the pistons are out. I wanted brake cleaner, but I could only get coil cleaner. Don't know why. Said he couldn't get none. Must be a lot of dirty brakes out there, but now we're at this stage. Just give everything a good spray. Grab your wife's tough brush, get in there, give it all a good clean, and see what they come out like. Right, there you go. So they're all nice and clean now. I suppose at this point you could paint them if you were going for the full on, the full on concourse restoration. We're not really going for that for this particular project. So they're okay as it is. They're clean. And they're uh, ready to change those seals, which we'll get to in a bit. And that's worth noting, the reason why these seized up in the first place is because of all that grub and whatever else on those pistons. So I'm just soaking them in here, which is just cold cleaner. Turn them over, give them a good little soak so we can clean all that off. And when they're all perfectly nice and clean, we can change the seals, get those back in, and start rebuilding up the, the brake calipers. Right, and to get these seals out, what we're going to do is take a pin and then just get in there. Difficult to do on camera, but see if you can see that. Get a needle and just pull them out. Obviously that's the first one, and do the same again for the big one. I won't scratch anything or damage anything inside. Okay, so this is the new seal kit. We've got the rubbers for the sliders, copper washers, uh, bleeding nipples, and the new seals. So we'll push those in, starting from the furthest one back. So it's the big one first, then the small one. And just seat those in, obviously without damaging, breaking. Don't be too rough, just get them back in those seated areas. So we'll tackle that next. Right, there you go, seals are back in. So just be careful when you put them in. You don't want to twist them. Make sure they're correctly seated, that's the next thing. And then when they're all in and you're happy with it, we've got to get the pistons back in. So the best thing to do is get some brake fluid, new brake fluid, 
and just lube them up. I suppose we put liberal with it. Get it all in there. Let's lube these seals up with brake. Break through there. Give the old girl a little dip. And then hopefully these now should fall in nicely and just push back really well. There we go, I'm seated in. Right, there we go, we've got them in on the end. Just the angle really, a bit awkward. But uh, once you line them up properly, push them back in. There you go, seal's changed, piston's back. Uh, swap the bleed nipples, put the rubbers on for the sliders, grease those up, put new brake pads in, and we should be good. Right, finishing up now, I'm going to get these in, these sit in here for the sliders to go in. All they do is just squash together. And push through. And then they come to the other side, just grab them. Spread them back out, lovely. Give a bit of a twist and a pull. Until they're all nice and correct, like that. And then the other one goes on uh, this side. And obviously, they go inwards. So, small side out, we're just going to get that lip sit into there. So, again, a bit of a twist and a push. And make sure they're all in, the kids are in. As you can hear, once you've got that in both sides, you've got some grease which come with the kit, so we'll use it. This just goes on here. I'll put a fair amount on, but without making too much mess. So, one on there. There's some on there. That's it, and you can slide these back together. So as you can see, that's the way it goes. Like that. So one, two. Get them on a line first. Swing it over to the right place. Lovely. There you go. Nice and greased up. That all works nice. So what we got to do now is swap that bleed nipple, which you don't really need to show me how to do that. So I'll leave that one. We'll put a new one in there. Do the same to the other side. Refit the brake calipers. This video has gone on long enough, so I won't show me fitting the brake calipers. I'm sure you know how to do that. Well, you probably know how to do all of it, but I just get bored and make videos just in case someone out there needs a bit of guidance. And then we'll get these back on the bike. So that's it for now. That is how I've rebuilt the front brake calipers on the CBR 600 and the back caliper seized as well so I'll go for the same process but I'm pretty sure it's just one uh, piston to take out and seals to replace okay thanks for watching if you did find it useful give us a subscribe and a like there's plenty more to do with this bike and there's going to be more projects coming up in the future I think this one once we get the fairings on and get it looking a bit better, we might move it on and buy something different to work on. So hope you keep watching and join me on that one too.